Welcome to Zero Experience Required. Today, we're making this. It is a heavy duty mailbox. The base of it is a cast iron bridge post that's been rotting in the back of my yard. So we have to clean that up. Attached to it is a really nice mailbox. And then we bolted it into a base of uh, cement that's six inches thick. This thing is built like a tank. And let's see how I made it. Let's compare it to the old mailbox. <laughs> As you can see, this is in rough shape. So we're going to have to hit this really hard and get down to bare metal before we even attempt to paint it. First step is to remove what's left of the old bolts to hold this thing in cement. And yeah, they're actually still pretty good steel. To get rid of all the old rust and paint, I'm using a angle grinder with a wire wheel attachment. I drag it in from the outside just so I can store it overnight. But as you can see, this thing is really heavy. It's really heavy. My back was hurting a bit after that. I decided to move it back outside. This I found to be one of the best techniques for moving it, just rocking it from corner to corner and walking it out. This is a dirty job. The wire wheel leaves behind black dust from the cast iron, which you're going to have to wash off eventually. So it's looking a lot better. But I'm not done yet. So I don't have any wire wheel left. This is as far down as I got it with. So this is an old gate post. Here's one place for the gate to attach. The other's right there. Now what's interesting is they cut off the old fence. And I wasn't able to see that until I cleaned it up. I used a rag covered in vinegar and then eventually acetone to clean this up to try to get rid of all remaining dust for painting. Here I'm making a template for a backer board that I'm going to be using to make sure that the epoxy putty doesn't just go into this hole. Something to hold it back. So I make it out of plywood and then put a screw in it so I can prevent it from falling into that hole. And here's that finished backer. I found this epoxy putty in the plumbing department. So what you do is you cut off the amount you need and then you mix it up and you it's just like play-doh. You force it in and then in a few minutes it's rock hard. So I pull out that screw after I've got the epoxy putty pretty much in where I want it and the backer still holds everything in place. And then I sand it flat, and it's actually, once it's painted, it's really hard to tell where these holes were. Then we paint it with something called a bonding primer, which is designed for cast iron and wrought iron, and it works pretty well. Then we go back with the brush to fill any voids with more primer. Then we hit where we're going to be putting the numbers with glow-in-the-dark paint, hoping that the numbers will glow in the dark. We cover them up with vinyl stickers so that when we peel them off, the glow-in-dark will be what remains. And then we just paint the bell box. We'll prime it. Decided to go with uh, oil-based paint, but that has to be thin with acetone, so you got to be careful. And when you're testing 
the spray you want to taste on something you don't care about. Also, this you can apply thicker than latex, and if it drips you can just hit it with a brush, and it should even itself out. Also, this oil just coats everything, so it's better to do this inside some kind of paint hood. I didn't, so my garage is kind of blue now. This is why when you mix with acetone in plastic cups, you need to clean up immediately. I left this overnight, and here's the result. And here we're removing the vinyl numbers to get to the glow-in-the-dark paint. And here's the best case scenario for the glow-in-the-dark. Don't use pencil on your glow-in-the-dark paint. It just won't come off. And now that everything is painted, it's time to reassemble the mailbox. I'm making a template here so I can drill the holes in the bottom of the post so I can properly attach it to the cement. And the template actually is going to hold the bolts that's going into the cement as well. You'll actually want to be pretty strong if you're trying to move something like this because they are heavy. I read that cast iron is easy to drill, but I burned out one bit trying to go through it and ended up buying a specialized one to make these holes work. And I actually had to kind of get a rig my own drill press to get the holes to go in. And it took quite a bit of time. I make sure to use a board so I don't mess up my uh, woodworking clamps. But still, this wasn't that fun. I lost the footage of pouring the cement pad that this is going to go into. But what I did is that wood plate you see me putting the bolts through, I actually attach the bolts to it and then push it into the cement after it's poured. And that's how they line up perfect. Then I go on to make a template so I can uh, drill the holes through the back of the mailbox and into the post and get them all lined up perfectly. And yeah. Then I have someone hold it while I drill the holes through because every time I tried to clamp it, it just would shift. I use a small bit first on everything to get the pilot holes in and then use a larger bit that's needed to make the holes properly. And I also have to undersize the uh, drill bit for doing this so I can tap these. I had to buy a specialized sized drill bit on a really odd size to get one fourth inch bolts to go in. And this is my first time actually tapping a hole. It wasn't that bad. I use nylon washers to separate the mailbox and the post so they won't rub and destroy the paint. And then I use a really, really long screw bit with a extension and another extension and another extension to get this screwed in. And this is also dangerous. You could hurt yourself if you fail to lift this thing up correctly. Now to get it into place, we just piled some scrap wood and then raised it up onto that scrap wood and then rocked it back and forth while removing pieces to get it onto the bolts. And it worked. And after it's down, we bolt it in and then I actually do a line of silicone around it so no water will infiltrate under and cause it to rust anymore. We also used vinyl to imitate the handprints from the movie Up for everyone in our family. Thank you for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed watching this get made. Like, subscribe, and comment and let me know what you think. Thank you. Bye.